Here at Plowman's Backyard, we homestead on 1.8 acres in Canada and we have um, basically we garden with short season varieties and we live in a climate or a zone four, but occasionally depending on the winter, it can be a zone three. So I always try and gear on the side of caution and plant very hardy um, plants and that means that I have to adjust what I plant. So if you're new to gardening and wondering can, what can you grow in a cold climate area or maybe can I garden at all? Well I'm here to tell you don't get discouraged because there's a lot of options for people that grow things in cold climates or short seasons. We just need to know where to look. Basically, when we moved to our home here in the country, we went from growing just about anything at our old city home and had to adjust what we grew. I thought perhaps maybe we could only grow like cherry tomatoes and cold hearty things like cabbage and broccoli, but that's not the case. So one of the first things that you want to do is you want to find out what grows well in your area. The next thing is find out what your family likes to grow because maybe there's a lot of things you don't need to grow. If you're like me, I like to have a lot of different varieties. So when I'm planting tomatoes, I don't want just a red tomato. I don't want just a cherry tomato. I want a good variety of color and a good variety of sizes. What that means is that I need to look at um, some different websites or catalogs that will gear to my climate. So I like to go to Baker Creek um, seeds. I also in Canada here, we can use West Coast seeds or Hawthorne seeds. And I also like to use um, high mowing seeds, which is also in the States. So if you wanna look at things like tomatoes, there's a lot of different varieties out there. You can look at their maturity dates when you're looking through the catalogs and you wanna find something. So if you're like me, I have 60 to 70 days max of growing what I need to grow here and on our home Homestead. So that means that I'm gearing more of my plants maturity around possibly the 70 day. It could, you can even get like a 42 day tomato, believe it or not. It might be a bit smaller, but you can grow tomatoes here. Sometimes I'll get an 80 day if I start it really early in indoors uh, in the winter, but I don't like starting too early because there's chance of disease. But if you want to have an 80 day tomato, you either need to have like a greenhouse or start it exceptionally early in the winter. So I have found that there are certain ones that grow really well here, like the black crim, black from Tula. I really like the dark tomatoes, Moscovich, uh, Manitoba tomato. There's a lot of varieties. So check out those websites that I, or catalogs that I've suggested and look at the maturity dates and how long it takes things to grow. So a few of my favorite uh, tomatoes that I do like to grow that are for short seasons. Um, I have a list here so that I don't forget because I can be forgetful. Um, so let's, it's a small slicing tomato, about 52 days. The Manitoba is 65 days and it's a little bit larger. Another one of my favorite tomatoes is the Black Prince and it is a little bit on the longer end. It's about 74 days. Um, but I've never really had a problem finishing it off. And sometimes on the really cold and wet summers, we've had to bring them in and ripen them that way, but we've we've really enjoyed those. There's also the subarctic um, plentiful and that is a 40 to 50 day tomato. So it's only a two ounce, so it's a smaller tomato, but there's a lot of varieties if you're looking. Another place is Tomato Fest. They have a ton of short season tomatoes available, tomato seeds. Uh, another one that I found was uh, Beaver Lodge and it's an early tomato, only 54 days. Again, it's a little bit smaller of a tomato. And then we found the Galahad. So the Galahad is 73 days and it is a 12 ounce. So that's like a good beefsteak style tomato. Another one of my favorite, cause I love the dark tomatoes is the black from Tula. It's about 65 um, to 75 days and it always finishes off in the garden. We never have to, we, we don't have to put it in the greenhouse and we don't have to bring them in to ripen them. So it's another, like it's a, a good sized tomato and um, the taste is phenomenal. So don't think you have to skip out on size color and taste if you're short season gardening. As for peppers, there's a pepper called King of the North red pepper, and that is more for short season um, growing and cold hardy climates. That doesn't mean you can't grow other types of peppers, but then you need to start them much earlier indoors or have a greenhouse. A lot of people with cold climates, or if you live in short seasons, you might not be able to grow corn. We have experimented with a few. Uh, we've tried Who Gets Kiss corn. It's a full cob of corn, but there are 
years that it doesn't finish off. So in order to be super safe, we've now switched to a hybrid corn, which you know, it's okay. The one thing that we liked about the Hugus Kiss corn is that you could save seeds from it. It was open pollinated. With the Allure corn, we can't necessarily, you can save seeds from it, but you're not going to get the true Allure corn because it's a hybrid. It is a shorter season. It's a full cob of corn and it always finishes off here in this location as long as it's not a super wet season. So there's a lot of different varieties. Another thing is, you know, sticking with the cold hardy things like we plant a lot of cabbage kale chard spinach those things really even broccoli and cauliflower those things really like the cold climate so you don't really need to focus so much on the maturity dates with those so don't get discouraged out there if you're thinking of gardening and have only a short season or a cold climate and i know that you can do it too we do it here at plowman's backyard we can a lot of stuff so don't think that you know just because you have a short season that you're limited